In this video, first I will create a Blazor WebAssembly app, then explain the project structure. As we know, a project includes folders and files. Each item has its role and functionality. Therefore, first of all, it is very important to understand the project structure. Then we may add changes to the project, including customization, adding new functionality, etc. Now, first, let's create a Blazor WebAssembly app with the default settings. Create a new project. I am going to create Blazor WebAssembly app. Select this. With this selection, go next. With this settings, go next. Click the create button. Now the project is being created. The project has been created successfully. This is the project name we just entered and there are several folders and files. In the following section, I will explain each folder and its file content. First, we have connected services item. This is being used to discover WCF services. And this is also being used to configure WCF configuration. The second item in the solution explorer is properties folder. Inside the properties folder, we have only one file, namely launch settings JSON file. Actually, this is a setdown file for local development machine only. This is not for staging or this is not for production environment. Let's see the content. There are three objects inside this file. The first one is IIS settings. The second one is profiles. The third one is Blazor WebAssembly app one. Actually, this name is same with the project name. Now, let's see in detail. We have application URL in the first object and we have SSL port here. In the second object, we have some settings. Actually, we use these settings when we press Ctrl plus F5. As a type, the application will use these settings. If we use .NET command to launch this application, these settings will be used. However, most of the elements inside this file are common for ASP.NET Core applications. But there is one element special. It is inspect URI. We have it here and we also have it here. Actually, this is only for Blazor WebAssembly application. Let's see in detail. We have some placeholder inside this element. Inspect URI property in the launch settings JSON file enables the IDE to detect that the app is a Blazor WebAssembly application. Second, this property instructs the script debugging infrastructure to connect to the browser through Blazor's debugging proxy. And this is only for Blazor WebAssembly applications debugging purpose. We have some placeholder inside this element. WS protocol, URL host name, URL port, and the browser inspect URI. The first one, WS protocol is WebSocket protocol. WebSocket protocols enables interaction between a web browser and a web server. The second one is URL host, we know that. And the third one is URL port, we just saw that inside the settings. And the last one is browser inspect URI. This is provided by the framework. For example, in the Blazor framework, this inspect URI provided by the framework. The third item in the solution explorer is web root folder. However, I will explain this folder later. Before this, I need to explain Pages folder. Pages folder contains the routable components or pages that make up the Blazor application. The folder contains following components. 
counter component implements counter page fetch data component implements fetch data page the index component implements the home page the route for each page is specified using the add page directive now let's see one of the components in details in terms of the coders and the page structure let's see counter component razor code blocks start with at mark and included by curly breeze first we have at page directive this is responsible for routing then we have html and in the lower portion we have c sharp codes namely we have three blocks in this page the first is razor directive blocks namely all directives comes here of course some directives comes in other parts of the page but most of the common directives comes the first portion of the page the second part is html code block here we write html codes then we have c sharp code block here we write c sharp codes namely dotnet code blocks in summary blazer component page divided into three blocks the first block is directive second block is html and the third block is c sharp code blocks now let's see generic razor page structure generic razor page structure is very simple it has three parts in other words this is the razor page or this is the razor component inside the razor component first we have razor directives part second we have html code block third we have c sharp code block this is so simple of course we may place c sharp code in other files and then import in the directives block of the component page if the c sharp code parts volume is big it is better to separate the razor and the c sharp code parts it gives clear page format the next item is shared folder shared folder contains following components and the style sheets main layout component the apps layout component this is a layout component for this whole application and this is very important and it has been inherited from layout component base class then we have corresponding css file namely style sheet for this main layout component the second component is no menu component and this implements the sidebar navigation for this application then we have corresponding no menu css file namely style sheet for this no menu component finally we have survey prompt component this is a survey component from microsoft layout component is very important in an application uh, because many components or many pages will be rendered inside the layout component so therefore layout component is very important it has add body directive and many components many pages will be rendered in the location of the add body directive layout components based on blazor templates and they use razor extension Blazor layout shares markup with components that reference it. Layout can use data binding, dependency injection, and other features of the component. A layout can be placed in the same folder as the components use it. Layout components shared across an application's components and placed in the application's shared folder. Because many components will share the layout components therefore in general in default we place it in the shared folder use at body to specify the location in the layout markup where the content is rendered namely if we use this layout component in the application related components will be rendered in the location of the add body directive 
The next item is imports.razor file. This file includes common razor directives to include in the apps components, such as add using directives for namespaces. This is a global file and can be seen everywhere from the application. The next item is app.razor file namely the root component of the application that sets client-side routing using the router component. The router component intercepts the browser navigation and renders the page that matches the requested address. All components will be rendered inside the app component. Because you see here, inside the app component, we are calling main layout. Actually, inside the main layout, we are calling or we are rendering all related components. So this means that all related components inside this application will be rendered inside the, this app component, namely the root component. From this assignment, we know that we may use any customized layout component in the Blazor apps. If we have a layout, other than the main layout, we may use this instead of the main layout. Therefore, from this assignment, we know that we may use any customized layout component in the Blazor applications. This is very convenient and this is very powerful. Actually, this root component is calling inside the index page. For example, we are calling app component inside the index page this index page is the sing single html page inside this single page application the app component is specified as the div dom element with an id of app just here div id loader then in program cs it is added to the builder's root component collection namely build the root components add app therefore there is one thing we need to understand we have the root component app the root component app is called two places one is in the index html page just here dev element of the dom then we are calling the same app functionality inside the program and then in the program CS, it is added to the builder's root component collection. The last item is the program CS file. Program CS file, the app's entry point that specifies the web assembly host. This file has two important roles. One, the app component is specified as the div DOM element with an ID of app to the root component collection. Yeah. component collection and the app is added as an id of app the second rule is services are added and configured in this entry point of the application we may add services here for example we are adding http client service finally not root folder namely www root folder this is the public folder of this application inside this folder we have style sheets javascript image files and app settings for example app settings development app settings staging app settings production and then we have index page actually this index page located in the web root field index html therefore this is the public folder of this application the first three is directives and subdirectives we have style sheets javascript files and the image files the index html web page is the root page of the application implemented as an html page when any page of the app is initially requested this page is rendered and returned in the response 
in this application we have only one html page that is index page therefore when any page of the app is initially requested this page is rendered and returned in response namely the page specifies where the root app component is rendered then the component is rendered at the location of the div dom element with an id of app namely div id app loader this dom element is inside the index page this is index page and this is the column location of the main root app component 